and teens or late teens, and I just really wanted to play guitar. While I was in high school, I would play out with my friends, and really the places to play would be Indianapolis. That was about 20, 25 miles away from where I lived, and uh, that was the place where all the clubs were and the places to where the good musicians were playing. So I wound up there, and uh, I was playing with my friends at a place called the Nashville Country Club, and they were bringing in a lot of uh, country music acts, and they had Dottie West coming in for a show. So I came down to catch her show, and uh, the guys in the warm-up band, the house band, got me up to do a few tunes. And so I'm on stage playing with them prior to Dottie's show, and I hear this voice out the corner of my ear, and I look out, I kind of look around, and there's Dottie West on stage with me. I never had even met her yet. And then we did a couple other songs, and, and uh, that night after the show, Dottie offered me a position with her. And uh, so I graduated and took off on the road at my semester break with Dottie West, and it was really a great experience working for her. So I thought he was just super uh, singer and guitar player. And, and so I signed him up to RCA Victor when I was there. And I remember he looked right in my eye and he said, do you want to be a star? And that just sort of, that shocked me because I never looked at, thought about it in terms like that. We made a few records and then he started playing bass with me too on the road. And about 1980, he started making hits and I fired him. I said, go out there and get you a band and rake in that money. I think it kind of hurt his feelings, but he knew what he knew what was happening. Vision in Nashville in 1957. His influence during this period is unmistakable. Chet was one of the main architects of the Nashville sound, a departure from the fiddle and twang of traditional country music and a foray into strings and horns, a more commercial pop sound. Many artists that played the rhyme and followed his advice. When Jim Reeves moved into a more sophisticated musical style, his career took off. Skeeter Davis had a monster hit with The End of the World. It's the end of the world. Not content to rest on his laurels, Chet continues to be an active force in creating and playing music. In 1973, in recognition of his past contributions to country music, Chet Atkins was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Well, everybody's got their own hero, and I sincerely mean as this gentleman is my hero, no doubt about it, and not everybody's lucky enough to be able to meet them, let alone play with them, and, uh, well, I'm awful proud to uh, play with my guitar hero tonight, Mr. Chet Atkins. Yeah. Well, Chet, I bet uh, sitting here in the Ryman Auditorium, I bet you have got a ton of stories about this old building. You came here... Uh, with the Carter Carter sisters first, right? When you first came to the Opry? I came as uh, Red Foley first, and then uh, I left for three or four years and came back with Maybell and the Carter sisters. And, and speaking of Maybell, she was a great woman and like a mama to me. And the girls were great too, but uh, I wrote a little tune. I call it Maybell. She played a lick on uh, You Are My Flower. You are my flower that's blooming the so I, I wrote a little tune, this is called Maybell. Will you play it with me? I would love it.
so that was a big, real big influence. This one, this is actually a particularly nice sounding one. Uh, I, w I would hear piano players and try to imitate what they did, sax players. And I just played what I liked with my thumb and fingers, and, and it turned out to be, uh, some of my licks turned out to be fresh and new and different. Well, Chet Atkins I met when I was nine years old the first time. And she was a little brat when she was little. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy, and of course everybody knows he's a great uh, talent and a great musician and a great producer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, we'll go down in history in this business, of course, uh, along with Owen Bradley of inventing what we now know as the Nashville sound. I saw a roster once of all the people that Chet had produced, and it's, it was three pages of just endless names. I mean. You wouldn't believe the names. I mean, it's from Elvis to Dolly, Willie Whalen, uh, Don Gibson, the Everly's, uh, Do you know, on and on and on. We were just trying to keep our jobs. And you keep your employment by making hit records. He's one of, of a few people in this town that I consider geniuses. Some of the most beautiful music, my favorite stuff that you produced, Chad, I'd have to say would be, and I sincerely mean, I love this, love that stuff, the Everly Brothers music that he did. He produced lots of that, lots of those uh, Rudolph O'Brien songs.